Well, out on site, it's, it's much more easy to see the relationship between the underlying geology um, and uh, the landscape, which is one of the things which the Weymouth Relief Road really picks out excellently. Basically, what we've got across the whole of Weymouth, coming from Portland up to the Chalk Ridgeway, is a massive geological structure known as the Weymouth Anticline. And that's basically a very gentle fold in the geology. So the layers of rock um, were, that were deposited all those millions of years ago slowly rise out of the ground, out of the seabed at Portland. And uh, they've been eroded away, but they would have plunged straight over again and uh, back into the countryside where the Chalk Ridgeway is. So from the southern part of the Weymouth Relief Road cuttings, right up to the top, all the layers of rock are all gently dipping to the north. And you can see that in the cuttings behind me, the layers of rock gently dipping to the north. And that's how, as the roadway has cut through them, we've gone from layer to layer to layer up to the youngest rocks in the chalk. Now, the way that relationship works with the landscape is, of course, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. The soft rocks get easily eroded, so they form the valleys, and the hard rocks don't get eroded so quickly, so they form the hills and the ridges. So the South Down Ridge is made up of the Corallian rocks, which are layers of hard limestone and uh, sandstones, uh, and with some clays in between as well. And then you go into the very soft Kimridge clay, and that's where Littlemore Valley is. And then as you go up towards the Knoll and Binkham Hill and the Hairpin Bend on the Old Dorchester Road, you're getting into the harder Portland Stone and the uh, Purbeck Stone. And then of course you get into the, to the massive chalk layers and that, those create the ridgeway. And so that, uh, that uh, relationship between the hardness of the rocks and the landscape is really important for us geologists because it maps out uh, the bedrock underneath the countryside. And it's not often a connection that people uh, will make. Now behind us, this cutting is the important one uh, for the geologists because this is the one we want to try and retain. The other cuttings, the layers of geology aren't really that suitable to be able to retain any of the rocks exposed, but here they are. I already mentioned that there's a lot of changes in the geology of the Corallian, where you've got layers of uh, soft sand and hard sand and limestones and clays all interbedded. So within this cutting, we've got several layers of harder rock. Now we can't really do much with the softer layers, but the harder rock, we can kind of etch into, make a little terrace and keep that exposed. And that's what we're hoping to have. So eventually, hopefully, you'll have this very, very striking exposure of geology as these layers run down the whole course of the cutting and disappear underground. And then as you work through, they'll give way to different looking terraces. And because the harder rocks will look very different, all the geology exposed will look very different as well as you drive through the cutting. Now one of the layers, to give you an example, is made up of something called the Osmington Oolite. And this is the kind of thing you would find exposed at the beach down at Osmington Mills. And Oolite is a kind of limestone made up of tiny little balls. And these form when little grains of sand or dust in the water are gently rocked back and forward. It's normally in warm, shallow water and the limestone forms around these little tiny fragments of, of, uh, uh, of whatever and uh, make these little balls, these little pea-shaped um, pieces of limestone. And they all stick together to form this very uh, characteristic um, uh, bubbly kind of aero chocolate-like uh, 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 rock. Now the place that this is forming today is the Bahamas. So as we're standing up here on a cloudy uh, autumn day, you've got to imagine that about 155 million years ago, we would have been swimming in a tropical sea here. So it's quite a different change, isn't it, from all those millions of years ago? Well, you can see here that the excavators have started just to try and attempt to expose the uh, harder layers of rock, just by taking these little notches out of the side of the profiled slope here to retain the, uh, the harder layer coming down the slope towards where it dips under the ground and disappears altogether. Now, as I mentioned, the Osmington Oolite is one, going to be one of these layers. Now, these oolitic limestones weather to be bright white, so you've got to imagine when it's finished, if it's successful, as you're driving through the cutting, there'll be this big bright white stripe running all the way down the side uh, of the cutting, which will look really, really impressive and get people thinking about the geology that's under their feet. But the reason we want to keep it exposed is there's a bit more to it than that. The Corallian in particular is one of the most interesting sections along the World Heritage Site, the Jurassic Coast, because it's very, very changeable. You find it over at Osmington Mills exposed, but it runs all the way through uh, this, uh, underneath the South Down Ridge, and you find it also exposed around Abbotsbury as well. But the Corallian at Abbotsbury is very, very different to the Corallian you see at Osmington. So because it changes so much, um, it's very interesting to study wherever you can find it exposed. So having a slice through it right in the middle of the county is absolutely perfect uh, example of an opportunity for scientists to come in uh, and maybe learn something new about this particular sequence of rocks. So very, it's very important for those reasons as well for us to try and retain as much of this exposure as we can.